today's career. In the heart of Milwaukee, students observe and practice the techniques to transform themselves I did it. <laughs> into professional chefs. The cooking part of it isn't the challenge. It's being ready to be in school. It's stressful. Can you learn? Can you adjust as you're going along? And that's what you have to do. Learning the art of cooking. It's amazing that they can get through it. I'm, I'm always impressed. From food preparation to presentation. I love how my food make people feel. When they be eating it, they be like, oh man, girl, this is good. I like seeing people's reactions to trying new food. MHCC has a great, great reputation. The instructors there really care about the students and they want to see them succeed. I went through it many, many, many years ago. People hungry, they hungry. You gotta get the food out, quick. You don't just cook thinking of yourself, you cook thinking of others. Creating a delectable dish is an art that can delight the senses, the colors, the sounds, and ultimately, the tastes. Great cooks work magic by combining just the right ingredients. Not as big of a flame. But what inspires someone to want to prepare and serve food for a living? You're gonna pipe them in the potato. For those who love to cook, often their connection to food came from meals prepared at home. Honestly, it was my mom. She's um, from South America, she's from Peru. And so I never had like American dinners every night. I had, I had Hispanic food, I had Peruvian food. So honestly, when I started getting older and I learned that there's different cultures out there and different foods come with it, I got really interested and I just wanted to be a part of a, this whole cultural experience with food. So I just have these memories of, of my mother and my grandmother cooking, even my father cooking. And so I think that inspired me to, to want to cook. My father was a single parent and he was a horrible cook. So I think that's part of the reason why I'm a chef today, so I can actually feed myself. Starting off at a young age, age eight, I have been cooking for my family. And um, food is one thing that's always brought us together. Thought I was gonna mess that one up. <laughs> When uh, I got to, I think I was 11, my, uh, I really wanted to cook so bad that my mom wouldn't let me by the stove. So uh, they got me an Easy Bake Oven. And like, it was only for girls and it was super expensive. My dad was like, you want this? You don't want no games or nothing for my birthday? I was like, no, nah, I'll get the Easy Bake Oven. And then I, I think I broke it in a week because the light bulb broke and then me and my brother were just shoving stuff in there. And I was like, my brother was like, you want to cook? And I was like, yeah, I'm putting brownies, cookies, destroy the thing. And then I really, Wanted to pursue it after that. What are you making? Crab cakes. Um, balling them up right now. I'm gonna bread them and then portion them out so there's enough. My grandma, before she passed, I used to be in the kitchen with her all the time. So I can make cakes, pies, homemade ice cream from scratch. So, and when she passed away, I just I just keep doing it every day. I go in the kitchen and do something different. Good work, Phil <laughs> and Lilo. We did it again, y'all. Cooking for family and friends is one thing, but becoming a professional chef requires training. You like risotto? Yes, sir. People were telling me that I can cook. I can cook, I can cook. I was like, okay, where can I go for uh, cooking? So actually, I went to a couple of other schools before I came to MATC. MATC, the Milwaukee Area Technical College, lies in the heart of Milwaukee. The school has offered a culinary arts training program for over 50 years. Our local restaurant scene is uh, the envy of some cities, and with that also requires skilled employees. So it really is our job at MATC to make sure that, um, just like any other industry, we make sure that there's a pipeline of talented individuals that can work in the restaurant industry. The culinary students that graduate from MATC typically graduate towards our fine dining restaurants. your experience here is a positive one. Excellent, wonderful. <laughs> the curriculum combines the art and science of cooking, everything from basic prep skills to final presentation and plating. 
Culinary Arts Program also offers um, an opportunity for students to gain uh, practical skills that will get them in the culinary industry, no matter what area in the culinary industry they'd like to go into. I really want to do um, photo styling and test kitchen work. Like just because you have a culinary arts degree doesn't mean you have to go and cook at this huge establishment. You can go to family-ran business, or you can go into hospitals, or um, daycares, or any, like every place has a kitchen. You can go anywhere you want. Teaches kids how to use, you know, basic skill, life skills. You know, how to how to cut up an apple. I mean, that sounds sort of rudimentary, but honestly, it's an important thing. How to, how to cut a potato, how to slice an onion, what's mirepoix, you know, how do you make a stock, how do you make soup. These are all basics that these kids learn. MATC students come from a variety of backgrounds and life experiences. I only did child care because I was at home, I was raising my kids, but when my children grew up and, you know, I kind of, I knew I didn't want to do that forever. I knew I always wanted to cook. I had a Pizza Hut restaurant. I had a Papa John's restaurant. I worked in catering businesses. Um, did food in the Navy. We used to cook lobster right out of the ocean on the beach. So I had a lot of experience, about 20 years combined experience. And the stroke wiped it all out. But yeah, I had a stroke. And then um, to get back into the swing of things, I started cooking again. Decided to come to school and relearn how to cook again professionally. One more minute. I went to school for computer networking, and um, my classes was really boring, so I came to MATC in the liberal arts program, and I just took general classes. And then I took one cooking class, and I was sold. These are Cipollini onions. They are pickled inside of beet juice. They come to school um, because they know that by going to MATC and finishing a culinary program, uh, that there's gonna be a brighter future for them. Every chef in training is required to purchase and wear a professional uniform, which includes a hat, either a black skull cap or a classic white toque, patterned black and white pants, black non-skid shoes, and the white chef's coat. How does that feel? It's not tight anywhere? No. Okay. Can you move your arms like this? Yeah. this that doesn't look too bad. And button it all the way down. You want to make sure it fits. Oh, try to. Like, can you move your arms around? Are you yeah. Is it it's, comfortable? It's loose. It looks like it's loose. You want to let the whole side of it, or? No, this one's fine. If it's fine? Yeah. Chefs in training also need to acquire the proper tools, such as a knife kit. The kit includes a variety of knives, as well as sharpening and measuring tools in a heavy duty case. All hands on training takes place in one of MATC's eight kitchens, or labs. METC is blessed with amazing facilities. Um, the kitchens are probably better than any commercial kitchen in the city. It's, you know, I walk in there, I'm like, my jaw drops because it's such a great environment for these kids to start out in. I mean, oh my God, you, their kitchen is the best. They have like all the equipment that you're looking for, even more. 32 salads. We could have the best labs in the world and that wouldn't mean a thing unless we had the talent to put into the labs. And that's really where our faculty come in. Up against the ribs. The culinary faculty demand um, that you perform at your best and they treat you like you're employed because our job is to get you ready for employment. Now, you're doing the angle cut. Um, like this. Uh, perfect. And that. You get a lovely lemon, lemon wedge. Squeeze and when you squeeze, it comes right out the center. New order, mofongo and cubano, please. I don't hear any herds. I heard one herd. So call back the order again. Sandra, huh? Le level. level, level, not heaping. You get your knife right underneath the skin and kind of go the whole length. You can keep the knife up against that. See how I have that against there? And it'll trim some of that away. It kind of shrinks up. Thank you. I would maybe a little more seasoning in the hollandaise, a little bit more heat, but then remember, I'm a chili here. More cayenne. I can um, get away doing that. But right now, that's lovely. Thank you. I'm actually excited to wake up in the morning at 6 a.m. to come to class.
The culinary program is a two-year, four-semester course of study. The first semester includes classroom lectures and a very fundamental lab class called mise en place, a French culinary phrase meaning everything in its place. The class meets once a week, three hours a day for 16 weeks. Chef Patricia Whalen has been teaching the basics of a professional kitchen at MATC for over 25 years. It's more than the skills, it's you know, almost like kitchen etiquette, how to work within a group of students, within a group, you know, trying to get the same accomplishment. <laughs> it's been a long day. Have your chef's knife out, your steel, your peeler. Every day they, they start out with a cutting board. They have a knife kit at the beginning of this class, but the only thing they need for my class is the chef's knife, which is the most basic tool that they're going to be using, the most important tool. The peeler and the steel, which they use to hone the blade of their knife, so they have to get those things out. Your vertical cuts, remember, not, not all the way to the root. Some of the fundamental skills are they have to handle a knife safely, that chef's knife. I would always hold the knife with my hand on top of the blade, and you're not supposed to hold it on the hand. Watch your index finger on your cutting hand. You had your index finger on top of your knife. You grip the handle, and you, 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 you grab the blade. You don't put your hand on it, on top of it. When you're using the knife, what you're trying to do is more of a rocking motion. It's not a banging down on the board, okay? Smooth cuts, you don't want to hear the clanking when you're you know, banging on the cutting board. So I shouldn't hear a lot of that. That is not appropriate. Just, you know, making sure that you're going slow and concise. Equally important for the students to learn is how to hold their gripping hand, referred to as the claw. I don't want to see any fingernails, okay? So, so your finger, your yeah. blade is up against here, okay. okay? That's right. At home, you don't pay attention to it. You won't be protecting your hands, and here you have to. And I sit right by the teacher, so. <laughs> I got a good spot, she stay on me. That's good. I always have band-aids in the class, and you know, the first week there's always some bloodletting, but um, you know, that's to be expected. Safety first, then hours upon hours of practicing precision cutting. You know, you have, you have quite a variety of yeah. sizes and shapes. Yeah, practice on that. All right. You know, that's a nice square end there, okay? got sort of big. Yeah, that cut my angles, <laughs> kind of. And so for these pieces, then you're just going to cut like eighth of an inch julienne on there. Okay. They learn knife cuts, so, uh, you know, starting with the onions and the carrots and the celery all the time. And this is called mirepoix, and that's what, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the French sauces and stocks start with that. I'm seeing some good square ends there. Okay, that's a nice dimension. There's six different cuts to do, so we practice those. I've learned how to do the dices. We have the large, the small, the medium, and the brumoise. Ah, she's gonna love the fact that I said that right. <laughs> That's an eighth of a, of a cube. It's a very, very tiny dice. The large dice is a three quarter by three quarter by three quarter. And so they do get a, a ruler, a culinary ruler, when they have that in their, their knife kit. And I encourage them to use that. Repetition is great. You know, you can't get that three-quarter inch dice unless you repeat it time and time again. All of our vegetables that we cut uh, are used by other labs. So, you know, we, we go through tons and tons of it every, every week, but it, it all gets moved out, which is nice. We're not wasting anything. So what's the best practice food for a new chef in training? There are chefs that are known that when you walk into their restaurant, the first thing they have you do is cook an egg. And if you can't cook an egg, you don't get a job. If you can cook a good egg, I think you, you have an accomplishment there. We're learning the poach, the simmer, um, just different kinds of eggs, scrambled, getting those down. And they say that the number of pleats is the number of ways that a chef should be able to make eggs. 
And so, you know, there's hundreds of pleats in here, and I don't know, uh, they're, they're, they've learned how to do seven different preparations of eggs. Students start with scrambled eggs. Okay, no, that's, that's nice. Nice and soft, nice color. I practiced last night with Chef. Did you? I got out of work at 11.30, stayed up till 12.30. Wow. <laughs> Made sure my mom got eggs. Practice makes perfect. Then they need to perfect sunny side up, keeping the yolk intact. Make sure you can move that around in the pan there, Cyrus. That's an over medium. This is an over easy. So we got to do two of each. We got to do two eggs of each. Creating an over medium or over easy egg is not as simple as it sounds until you've mastered the flip. And basically, it's just the turning of the, of the egg. And don't do like that. <laughs> I, I don't want to have any fold on it either, OK? So don't fold it. This student's egg flopped before it flipped. How did that look? Eventually, practice makes perfect. There you go. Now go. There you go. Go, go. You got to give it. There you go. Ah! Go. Good job. <laughs> Put it on plate. Okay. A little bit of a too little much bit brown. brown. Yeah, but your yolk is nice and uh, runny. Okay. Good job. You got applause and everything. Yeah, I right applaud myself because I, <laughs> I did the flip. One of the most difficult egg preparations is the omelet. The French omelet, which is the one I think that I, uh, has the most technique involved. You are trying to get the raw egg to cook. Make sure that you're getting around the sides so that those sides don't just get real thin and overdone. Using a technique by the famous chef Jacques Pepin, students learn to carefully maneuver the egg in the pan to both cook and fold it. This half should come over. Right, right, right. Okay. Now, do you have a plate? And, oh, <laughs> okay. But before you do that, the next time, instead of, well, have your hand like this. Okay, so that you can just go like that. It has a nice shape, it's nice and plump, and it is moist on the inside, yes. okay? But next time, start with a hotter pan. Yes. Okay. I did it. <laughs> All right, if you let it go too long, it's gonna get brown. After mastering the basics of cooking an egg, students move on to cook some favorite breakfast egg dishes. Scrambled egg. I love scrambled egg. You're still doing your French toast? Yes. Okay. I'm just getting my egg. I'm ready for takeoff. Remember, you need a fork. Yes. Anyone for stuffed French toast with a side of omelet? Or how about a perfectly prepared dish of Eggs Benedict? I, th I hope it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> Whose is this one? That one's mine. OK. Yolk is nice and runny, OK? Maybe slightly a little bit overdone, but it's, it's good, good. Never made baked eggs before. First time for everything. Eggs and bacon food truck owner Erin Broderick makes her living making specialty eggs. During her mise en place class at MATC, she spent a lot of time perfecting the art of cooking eggs. Eggs and breakfast food, I think, are both uh, anytime food, in my opinion. I mean, I know growing up, uh, you know, it was a luxury to have breakfast for dinner some nights. And I, and I still think that people enjoy having breakfast any time of day. I feel like people are really particular about their yolks, but when we're busy, you're just gonna get it like over medium, no choice. <laughs> All right, a little bit of Munster melted on there. Chef Roderick originally graduated from Marquette University with a degree in journalism and later studied baking and pastry making at MATC. I'm grateful for a lot at MATC. Those skills, those basic skills that are pretty much what has helped me sustain, I feel, a pretty successful food truck. All right, we'll have that up in just a couple minutes. You know, I think there were a lot of wonderful instructors there that just had, you know, had the right skills, said the right things, were in a position that they should have been to encourage 
quality people to come out of there. Thanks so much. Student chefs quickly learn that only with repetition and practice will mastering of technique become secondhand. This time, what's flipping is a crepe or thin French pancake. You should be able to flip it. Whoa! I hope you caught that. <laughs> come on. You don't even want to come out. There you go. Bam! <laughs> Did you get the flip? <laughs> yeah, they got the flip. Y'all got the flip. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to undo it. <laughs> don't do it. No. You are so pretty. Stick to the plan. There you go. Nice and thin. Super thin. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna try any of that fancy flipping stuff anymore. <laughs> Team three, broccoli. Team four, mushroom. Students in the culinary program spend considerable time working in teams, which is a great asset once you start working in a professional kitchen. This is the uh, Western Red Club a la carte main hotline. This is Tom Evert. Tom Evert is a uh, first year student at MATC in the associates program. So. Tom currently works sauté, but he also works all the stations throughout the club. James Golombowski, executive chef at the Western Racquet Club in Elbe Grove, Wisconsin, and an MATC culinary program alumnus, values his team. We see each other more than I, I see my actual family on a regular basis, so it's a, it's a very tight-knit bond that we have. This is Wally Lenhoff. Wally's the lead line cook here at Western Racquet Club, so he's a graduate of MATC in the Associates program. He actually just celebrated his 10-year anniversary, started as a dishwasher, and now he runs the kitchen when I'm not here. MATC really opened my, opened my eyes up to what it took to take a menu item from vision or concept to the preparation of the items, all the prep work, all the mise en place that goes into it. It's nothing like getting in there and getting to work, you know, getting to work, blending in, being able to laugh and conversate with your coworker, look over and peek at their stuff and then peek back at yours. I didn't do all the skills. I would just get in there and just throw stuff together, but now I'm taking my time, using the methods that I'm learning. I wouldn't add the milk to that first once it warms up. So don't put that in yet. Right. So you have to give it a touch. <laughs> no, it just needs a little bit more time. It looks beautiful. Thank you. You need to practice. You definitely need to practice and getting better, getting faster, so it's working. The Mise en Place course teaches basic cooking and kitchen skills these chefs in training will use over a lifetime in their own kitchens. A lot of students are working in the industry, so they know some of the basics, but to put it all together so that they're all ready to go into second semester is my, my goal. Chef Whalen, I love her. She is, I love all the chefs, but she is one of my favorite chefs because she's so precise. She's so together. She's informative. She talks to you. She works with you and she takes time with you. I want to think that they are learning not only skills, but also almost like behaviors and attitudes, uh, you know, how to be a professional. We're looking for a palate. We're looking for passion. We're looking for a fire in the belly. We're looking for a sparkle. You know, do they have this personality that sort of lights up a little bit? Um, that's what we look for in all of our employees. The last time I was in school was in 93 here, and I quit, and then I decided to come back, so. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with it this time. I'm gonna do the two to three years, whatever it takes. I'm gonna do the whole two to three years. I'm not giving up this time. It's a tough business, and that's why the MATC culinary program is so important right now, because it's graduating 50, 60 kids every year into the marketplace that can be put to work and have a career almost immediately. All right, we're all set with the piglet. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Coming up on Cook, Plate, Dine. Our chefs in training move on to more advanced cooking techniques. Add your spices first. There you go. Beautiful. Stir those in good. And now wait till it gets so stirred in, and then you can add the stock. 
Learn to cook vegetables with panache. Your seasoning is spot on. So all you need to do is remember to turn them, and make sure you get that brown in, okay? Okay. And carve meat with confidence. You control it. Don't let it control you. You're doing exactly right. The dishes get more complex as the training steps up a notch. Well, the big taste test. That's delicious. Join us next time for another taste of Cook, Plate, Dine. We'd love to hear from you about this episode of Cook, Plate, Dine. Call us at 414-797-3760 with your feedback. Discover more about Cook, Plate, Dine online at milwaukeepbs.org. And follow us on the Milwaukee PBS Facebook page. You can try re rescuing it, but I don't know if it's going to work. I didn't think my aide was going to make it. First thing you should take out is your chef's knife. You can start cleaning up now.